Hello and welcome. Bonjour et bienvenue. Herzliche willkommen. Grüezi. Hola y buenos dias. Buongiorno. Bon dia. And aloha. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Yvonne Quezon. I welcome you to the uh, Spiritual Awakenings International event today. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, start today's event with uh, a prayer, with a blessing. So if we can all, if we can all internalize for a moment and shut your eyes and center your consciousness at the space uh, between your eyebrows, which is known as the, um, uh, the third eye. And just focus on the stillness within. Heavenly Father, Mother God, who is known by many names, by persons of many pasts and traditions, bless this meeting. Help us all to be instruments of your love, of your light and of your peace on the planet. May thy will be done. Om. Peace. Shanti. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Spiritual Awakenings International uh, Featured Speaker event. We are delighted to have Tamara Calder Richardson as our featured speaker today. And uh, before we start, we always love to find out where everybody is joining us from. So if you could please take a moment now and just type into the chat, where are you Zooming in from today? So we'll know where you're coming from. Uh, I greeted you in, uh, oh, Monterey, Mexico, Toronto, Canada is coming up already. I, Ireland, hello, Charlie from Ireland. I greeted you in uh, uh, seven different languages because reflecting that Spiritual Awakenings International is truly an international network. Um, we are in 63 countries around the world, which just is delightful to us on every continent, except for Antarctica. We're still waiting for one of those penguin researchers <laughs> to subscribe, but we are delighted. Thank you, everyone. Wow, across the United States, all sorts of neat places, across Canada. Anyway, um, I would like to introduce you now to the Vice President of Spiritual Awakenings International, Robert Baer, who will be uh, giving you some opening remarks. Robert? Thank you, Dr. Kason, and thank you everybody for joining us today. It'll be a, a great presentation. I've been looking forward to this one all, uh, all year. Um, a couple of things. Uh, I want to introduce a few people that uh, either have shown up or will be showing up, and you'll be able to see them in your little gallery view. Uh, one of them is uh, Anna Cecilia Gonzalez, who's a advisory board member for Spiritual Awakenings International. She's also the person that is the chair or the leader of our Espanol, SAI Espanol, and uh, She's her and uh, Francisco Valentin and Dr. Ingrid Honkala have put together a tremendous program on behalf of SAI. And I wanted to acknowledge that. She's done a great job for us. Uh, also, we have uh, uh, Deborah Kaiser, who uh, is uh, as a facilitator for our sharing circles. Raymond O'Brien, I haven't seen him yet. He's from England. He's on our um, advisory board. and. Uh, I think I got them all. I think I got everybody. But um, a couple of housekeeping uh, things. Um, the format of the meeting, everybody is going to be muted but the speaker. And there'll be a question and answer period at the end. And if you would use the chat to put your questions in, um, that's how we're going to do it. Um, our sec secretary, Linda Truax, is the one who's going to lead the uh, question and answer uh, session later on at the end of the uh, session today. And um, she does a marvelous job at it. And just as a reminder, Spiritual Awakenings International is donation-based. 
we try to we have been able to make all of our presentations all of our things free to people all over the world but we invite you to make a donation and uh, it helps keep our events free and please go to www.spiritualawakeningsinternational.org and punch the donate button i'm going to give it back over to dr Kason. thank you everybody all right thank you robert so now it is my pleasure to introduce our featured speaker for today, Tamara Calder Richardson. So we are really delighted to have Tamara on as our speaker today. As Robert mentioned, she is a member of the Spiritual Awakenings International Advisory Board. So we're really happy to have her on our team. And she is also the chair of the SAI, that's our short form for Spiritual Awakenings International, our SAI Marketing Committee. So we're absolutely delighted to have Tamara helping us. Tamara is a, a six time NDE or near death experience experiencer. And she's also a multiple STE or spiritually transformative experience experiencer. She is professionally a mystic seer and international evidential medium, uh, as well as a Christian minister and a Christ channeler. She was born in Hickory, North Carolina. And she says that she was born with the gift of sight but she believes that the many near-death experiences she had enhanced her abilities to see into the hidden realms. She trained uh, for eight years in the British style of evidential mediumship with international mediums and authors such as John Holland, the UK's Joan Tony Stockwell, and she's certified as an advanced psychic medium by UK TV medium celebrity, Lisa Williams. Uh, Tamara has in the past, prior to COVID, <laughs> done stage shows at women's expos, et cetera, such as the Southern Women's Expos, before large audiences. And she has a loyal following. Uh, she is um, the host of an extremely popular YouTube show, which I recommend you check out if you haven't done so yet, Seeking Heaven, the Near-Death Experience and Other Phenomena. And I think several of her uh, fans from that show are with us today. So with no further ado, I'm going to uh, hand it over to Tamara Calder Richardson. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. And I, I tell you what, um, I... Normally, I mean, you know, it's not that I don't get excited about speaking. I always am very grateful, but I have been so excited speaking for Spiritual Awakenings International. What an amazing group. And those of you that are new to SAI, uh, it was created for, you know, by experiencers, for experiencers, just like my channel. And they, this just has been a lovely group. It's a very safe place, which is why today... I'm pushing the I'm pushing uh, the the a little bit further with my presentation because I know I have a very caring, supportive group of people. All of you, and many of you, have, this is not a new topic, Indies. <laughs> so I want to give something a little bit more to you since you're a little bit more educated. Before I jump into the PowerPoint, just real quick, a couple of things that you may not know about me is I owned an advertising agency 27 years. I am actually a trained designer. Uh, visual designer, as well as slogan and copywriter. And I had corporations that were clients for, for many years. And then I went through an awakening, which there's so much I'm going to go over today. Uh, I'll do the best I can to cover it all, but it's going to be quick because there's a lot and I'm still not even touching everything. But with this spiritual awakening, I decided after much prayer uh, to God, and then Jesus had to step in and explain things to me that to use my abilities and gifts in which I had to be able to help this world and, and that's what happened. And I feel like it's more of who I am and what I came here for. So yeah, I don't make the money I did, but wow, I am so much happier. So that's part of who I, who my past that I still use. You can see, you know, with SAI, with my channel, I still use those skills. I've been married 33 years. I met my husband at 19 and he has been, um, one of my biggest, I say accomplishments because he's, uh, I think we have a good marriage and we're good friends. So to me, that means a lot. He's my grounding force and he's seen all these changes and it, he hasn't flinched a bit. So he's tough. <laughs> and then as well as I am a black belt and Hapkido, and I, and I throw that out there and say that 
and I know that um, you know th this might resonate with some people, but because of uh, the abuse that I had as a child, that this later this was later in life. This wasn't that long ago. This is like four years ago. I got my black belt, so I was not a spring chicken. And this was this was just recently, and it was ten years, and a lot of broken bones later. I was the only woman that fin finished after ten years of combat hop keto. Yeah, five two with all these men. It was really funny, but um, it maybe it gave me my power back, and it it, I, it got rid of the whole victim thing. And it was something I did for myself. So the saddest thing I had to do was take off my nails. I put them back on today, so there I go. <laughs> I still have my black belt. But yeah, I walked in with five inch stilettos and long nails, and this woman is not going to make it. But I did, and uh, it was, and I got really good at the technique. So that's a little bit about me, and I love disco. I'm obsessed, and that's my happy place. It's Donna Summer in the Bee Gees. I don't know why. I think it's funny and fun. And so my husband was a musician and now he likes it too. So that's just some fun things about me. So I wanted to go ahead and get started and I'm going to screen share. All right. Here we go. All right. And all right, we are ready to go. Okay, a little bit about me, my, to my topic, Seeking Heaven, my six near-death experiences and other phenomena. Today, I'm going to be talking about my six near-death experiences and many of the after effects, which is I, I have regularly <laughs> spiritually transformative experiences with Dr. Yvonne Case and, of course, coined that term. So I'll talk a little bit about the mediumship, how that happened, about psychic knowing, how I just knew things. And it's funny to some people, mediumship's a dirty word, psychic's a dirty word. Hopefully, I will make all of these very palatable and understandable when I'm done. Evidential channeling. Is there, is, a, is, is there such a thing? Yes, there is. Astral traveling, ghosts, demons, holy angels, and UFO and ETs. So I'm going to jump right into my NDEs. So the first one. All right. It was a head injury. I've had lots of head injuries. And this first, if you look at the bathroom, you're like, my first slide is a bathroom. You know, it almost it kind of sums up my life there. <laughs> uh, coming from the bathroom out. So, and it's funny, uh, that's where spirit likes to talk to me a lot. It's a joke, people that know me, but this looked a lot like the bathroom in my grandparents' uh, house where my mom lived, except for it was more black and white and the window and, and the whole structure of where things were set. And I, as a spirit, I didn't know it was a thing, but what happened, I had some regression and <laughs> I, I didn't know it really worked. And I saw my entire, before I was born, what happened in detail with emotion, with all the dialogue, and it all made so much sense. And basically my mom was 18 and I've never told this story. A lot of these things are you, you that are here, uh, which uh, I appreciate your support and, and, of, and of course with SAI, but uh, I've never told this, but I feel like it's healing for me and maybe it'll be healing for some of you all as well. So my mom, who's still living and I love, she was 18 and she was a young girl and she got pregnant. It was the 60s. It was not popular to be pregnant and not be married. And so she took matters in her own hand and tried to uh, do a homemade medical <laughs> experiment. And I saw the whole thing with blood. It was a mess. It was really something. And I, and I felt so much love and compassion toward her because I was spirit, I was everywhere. And I could see out the window, outside and in there all at the same time. And I wanted to embrace her and her sister came in and said, and she knocked on the door. She goes, oh my God, what have you done? And she goes, okay, it's okay. Let me help you. This is gonna be okay. And she basically promised that she would be with my mom and me and support us because she was older uh, our whole lives. And she kind of has, she really has. So. She has been for the most part there exactly what she said. It's funny people when they say that I'll love you forever, they really mean it or I'll help forever. They really do. So um, that was something that I felt uh, for her and compassion and great love. And But it, I had multiple, you know, punctures to the head. So, uh, but I had no hostility or anything. I just love, but I did feel later moving forward unwanted. <laughs> Well, that might make you feel that way, but it wasn't, uh, no, but I had no misemotion carried with her from that. I had love. I felt sorry for. So the next one, this is what happened. So it, was, it all turned out great. Look how cute I am. And it's so funny because there's a picture of my husband with a little dog on his shirt. He's got curly hair too. So that's baby Tammy. Look how happy I am. I'm, I'm like totally just happy and clueless. So the next one, when I'm age three, I'm playing. This one is another 
injury to the head. <laughs> There's so if this is this this is part of this whole connecting to the God thing. A lot of head injuries. So the nail, I was playing hide and seek. This home that I'm showing here, antebellum type looking home. It was my uncle Joe, my mom's brother, and he had just gotten married. And this was his mother-in-law's house. And this person, uh, my uh, Mrs. Cruz, her house. Uh, I was playing with my cousin. We, she was about the same age. And we were playing hide and seek. And she goes, I'm going to count. And she was downstairs and she'd run upstairs. Well, upstairs were the bedrooms. So I'm looking for where the bedrooms, where I'm going to hide. And it's funny because I was sensing spirit in the house while I was doing this a little bit, but I didn't understand those things. And I'm jumping up and down. She goes, I'm coming. And I hadn't hidden yet. So I goes, ah. And so I'm jumping, jumping. And under the dresser, there was, I don't know why it was a nice home. I have no idea, but there was a nail hammered underneath. So when I jumped, I jumped really hard. <laughs> I, I was very uh, at high energy and I jumped and the nail pierced my skull. Uh, I, and I thought it was because, you know, it happened so quick. I touched my head and I thought it was water, but it wasn't, it was blood. And immediately I passed out. I, I, and then I was above my body and I was unconscious, but it, I felt, I didn't feel the pain because I'm out and I felt peaceful. As soon as I popped out, I was peaceful. And then I saw all these beings of light start filling the room. And then I could see from different directions, different places, uh, all at the same time. And I saw them, it was like a gone with the wind staircase that were lining up there. I felt like they were loving and caring and somehow I knew them. Were they all family? I don't know. I mean, maybe there are people I've known in, in the past somehow because there was a lot of them. Then I saw after that, of course, this incident. <laughs> I never stopped seeing spirit people. But yeah, I was uh, above my body. Um, I was around different areas. Finally, um, I, I'm, I come back to my body. I'm looking around, looking at different places. I go outside. I come back. I'm, and I'm hearing this conversation over my body uh, with people. And my mom's like, she'll be fine. <laughs> She's like, throw some Robitussin on it. No, she, she'll be fine. And I'm like totally unconscious. Blood's coming out of my head. And so there, I see in spirit at this point, I see to me that it was an, it was an angel. It was not human. It was a beautiful, brilliant uh, white light with, with gold and, and, and it had like an orange red tint to it. Now, later on, at that moment, I didn't know. Later on, I kept hearing Uriel. I didn't know that was an archangel. And so now I know that Uriel is an archangel uh, of the Lord. That's the, the name is known fire of God, which I always kid and say I'm a firecracker for God. So they put me a perfect guardian angel. And then the, this, this uh, being that was about nine, 10 foot tall had, if you want to call it like a hand, over my head and energetically healing my head. And then I heard, felt, knew, it wasn't just like, hey, Tamara. <laughs> it was more, it just, it was powerful. It was permeating through my entire body. I knew it 100% it was God. Um, you, you, how do you know? You, you know, <laughs> when the time comes, you know, and it was like, it was God. And he says, this is not your time. You have much to do, which was interesting. I did a, uh, a research. Uh, there was a research study done. I've done a, a few of those on me. Uh, and that's something that comes up. There was uh, a guy in Africa, one, another subject that was eaten by, I mean, he lived through it, but he got mangled by a tiger and, and the same thing. So anyway, back in my body immediately when those words happen and, and and that's the part that sucked because it was painful my head hurt I was I didn't really understand what was going on and then again like I said I saw spirit people so now age number three and you know we still are going to go through my spiritual transformative experiences so we're, we're you know there's a lot to cover so here we go so this was the car crash. This is the scene. This is my mom. She's 23. I'm about three, a little over, uh, okay, my birthday's in March, it's summertime. So, you know, three and, you know, four months or something. So my mom's 23. She wants to get out from the thumb of my grandmother, which by the way, this is so funny. I got to show you this really quick. 
look at the face of my grandmother and granddaddy. This is my mom getting married. <laughs> like there's probably a shotgun in that picture somewhere. And that you can see my dad is Native American Indian. He's Cherokee and you can see how much darker he is than my mom's like little white, literally white. You can see like that little bump or something. My grandparents behind him, they're like, they look, they do not look happy. So my mom lived with my grandparents and she wanted, she wanted to have her own life. So she was in Hickory, North Carolina. But there was a guy that was really flashy. She had her eyes on him and she had to have that man. So she wanted us to all go on a day date so I could meet him. My grandmother was reluctant because it was a very bad day that day. It was wintry and it was, it had, there was ice everywhere. It wasn't snowing at that time, but it was just ice. It was just bad weather. And she goes, no, no, we'll be fine because everything was closed close by, but still it was bad weather. So this car is significant. This is the car. So I, for you guys, I went back through some old pictures. We had to get it out of the attic and to pull these pictures. So you can see that that's the actual car and that's my actual age. And that's the actual car that the accident was in, which was repaired and used again. So we were going to the pizza hut and then eat ice cream afterwards. And it's funny that's a 1960s picture of Baskin Robbins, which is where we went. And we actually went to that pizza hut that looked just like that, uh, those styles back then. So after we were, afterwards, we went to this place, uh, which is where our, he ended up being my stepdad. He ended up adopting me, but we went to his uh, radio station. He was a DJ. And then he became an editorial announcement. And my family was always involved with broadcast and media. And I did like that part of it. So we went there and that's called, that was channel one. And you can kind of see his attitude. Like he was like a cool hipster. <laughs> my mom she, uh, she was all into that. My mom was very fashionable. She really, she, she was just set on being with this man, Ray Calder. So while we were there, he said, we're, I'm going to talk to your, to your mom, but you can pick out all the albums you want. And so I picked out some Motown, uh, some albums and I was like, oh, this is fantastic. There were those little records back then. And then the monkeys, and I actually met the monkeys twice. <laughs> And uh, one of the times Mike Nesbitt punched uh, one of the guys at the radio station in the face because they got into a fist fight. <laughs> I know he just passed. God bless him. Okay. So the next one. Uh, so here we go. So how this is, uh, we're still on this one. This one is, okay. So they get into an argument because my mom wants to get married. He wants to save up money. He's not ready yet. No, I need more money. I'm, a raise is coming. Just wait. She wants to leave. So they get into an argument that we get in the car he starts racing down the road an icy road, <laughs> not a good combination. So he, it's really him. He puts on, there's nobody out there. There's no other cars. He slams on the brake. We, we turn, we turn around and then we hit a tree and there's a tree that's in a park and we hit on the driver's side in the front, but it was a lot of impact. And when that happened, I went up through the windshield and it was a it it was an impact to the face and head the head again, and it shattered my nose. Matter of fact, uh, I had two as an adult. I had two operations to pull cartilage out of my face and my nose, and uh, which you know God's good because I don't think I look horrible. So you know God is good, and and I can think clearly. So God is, God is a restorative God. So that that when that happened, and I was a very it was it was a big old tree. <laughs> It wasn't a little young tree. It was like a 200 year old tree. When we hit that and we hit it to the front passengers and we were wrapped around literally the tree. I was stuck in the windshield because you could, you saw the car. I immediately was forced. It was a force out of my body and I felt wet and cold. And then I was looking and I couldn't find my body. And then I was in the black as black you can imagine. It was very dark. And I had a lot of confusion because I didn't understand. And then I saw light right from the distance. I started seeing something that started forming into what looked like a tunnel. And people think the tunnel was common. Um, it's really not necessarily that common of what is stuff. Not everybody has a tunnel, but it, to me, it's probably a portal, but it just formed in what I thought looked like a tunnel. And in that tunnel, Jesus started coming toward me with the holes in his hands, okay, which tells me now that's a lower level thing because I wasn't at the higher levels at this point. And he had the holes in his hands and there were people behind him that were very friendly that I recognized 
in some way on a soul level, they were my family, although I did not know them in this life. I think they had crossed over already. And the deal about the bird. So there was <laughs> where we lived, we had, there was a bird there was an egg. I didn't know it was a bird's egg. I was a little kid. I didn't know it was a bird's egg. And so I thought it was a ball. I just didn't know what it was. And I went like that. And I was like, and I saw something organic in it. And I, and then, so, and then I think it was a neighbor of mine that said that that's a bird. I went, uh, I was devastated. I killed something else because I didn't, it was an accident. And I was just distraught over this. I was like, oh my gosh. And so they said, we have your bird, he's fine. And that was so significant to me that the bird's okay. Um, because that was something that just really affected me. I don't even like killing, I don't even kill bugs. You know, I don't like that. So Jesus told me, he said, you have to go back. And, and when he's coming toward me, his hair's uh, flying back, almost like it's a rock video. <laughs> you know, like you would imagine like a fan. And that's, that's what I saw, but he was very, he was a bit stern. He said, you have to go back, but I'll always be with you. And at this point, I'm like, no, I don't want to. And then I'm back. So when I come back, I'm not really in my body. I am all over the place. I'm caught between many different worlds. And this is where it gets really interesting <laughs> is that behind me, because again, I'm still, I'm in the body, also spirit. I'm looking at multiple directions. Behind me, there's an old firehouse. Now, again, it's an icy bad day. I, no one is out, okay, except for us. Nobody's out. I don't see cars. I'm seeing all these spirit people. Many of them are firemen that have on these old-timey uniforms. And I knew that looks, I knew that wasn't modern. And there was a lot of spirit people around and they were like, they were not ghosts. They just like kind of showed up for me. They were really nice. They're just like regular people, but they were spirit people. And then a woman comes up to the driver's side of the car, the passenger. And at this point, some good old boy, um, rednecks, <laughs> uh, came by and, and a wagoneer and they were trying to work with chains and pull them, pull us out from the tree and all of that. Okay. So I'm seeing that going on. And then I'm this woman links, no one can see her and uh, no one can see all this, but me, and I'm just taking all this in and she leans over and she looked like she had a pillbox pat hat. She looked like the, maybe the early forties. And she goes, hi, <laughs> um, I'm Judith Hefner, your grandmother, who was a big big to do in the town. She owned a, a, a men's hosiery mill, which is men's socks, her and my granddaddy. And she did all the sales. She did all that. And she like, jewelry. and she said, my, your grandmother is my mother. And she bought, bought stuff at her jewelry store. And I'm going, I'm going, oh my God, I'm traumatized. Why are you telling me this? And then I started hearing whispers in the background. And it was, and they said, and now I know this to be what they said is she's the one who carries our voice, which I'm a medium, which I didn't even want to do this at all. Um, but well, God had other plans. So then I look to the right and I'm seeing, it looks like a rip in the universe. It, the closest I've come to it. And I've told him is David Ditchfield's, his drawing, you know, the book shine on from England, lovely, lovely person. He's been on my channel uh, a couple times. Uh, you should check it out. It's amazing because I've got his music and everything on there and his art is what it looks like. And I, I was very leery to tell people what it looked like because it sounds like it was scary. It was not scary, but it was like fire and bright light. To me, it was creation. It was like a God portal and it was like a rip there. And I could see brilliant. This time my angel was full on, man. She was like <sighs> blazing, just brilliant. And right beside me on my right side, I was in, I was out, I was all over, I was everything at once. Okay, so then I'm looking across the street, which again, frozen park, it's frozen. I didn't know there was ever a lake there. And I never really noticed it because it was just a little block of land. They call it a park, but it was just a little block of land in the middle of town with a few trees that I guess people could walk through. But what I was saying is a Native American family with a child cooking fish over a fire now that it, it was icy there was nobody that, i mean this was spirit people i, I so the, i saw that and then i saw an 1890s couple walking through strolling with an old timey baby carriage and then i looked up and saw a hot air balloon question do did i see 
things from the past layered? Am I seeing things going on now that are layered over in time? Can I see into different times? Am I picking up another dimension? I don't know. All I can tell you is what I saw. And then of course, in the meantime, this Wagoneer, uh, the, the rednecks did not come with that woman in the dress, but they were trying to pull us out. They did pull us out. They eventually pulled us out. Oh, let me go back here. Let me finish this up here. So they pulled us out. We went back to the channel one. They did not take me to the hospital. My nose was busted. From that moment on, we moved to, <laughs> it was awful, to his trailer park. Oh my God. We Look, I grew up in a 10,000 square foot house. My grandparents looked out for me. I had hot meals. I had toys. It was all good. Now we're in a really yucky trailer park with mud everywhere. It was absolutely awful. And I never went back ever again to my grandparents. They never told them where they were. And I will mention this real quick because this, I think this is significant is, um, I kept praying a lot. Thank God that my grandmother taught me about Jesus. Cause I really didn't have any religion or anything like that. So I was like, help me out. So I visualized there was a commercial on at the time called Valley Dale sausage. And he goes, who, 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 Valley Dale, who ran for Valley Dale, who ran for Valley Dale. Okay, now I don't sing for everybody. So these little animated black and white <laughs> pigs and things that were marching through the streets, I visualized them being my friends and show me, showing me the, the way out of this place. And so they showed me how to pick up a phone. Oh, again, I'm, I'm a little over three, how to dial. I didn't know what the number was. I never even knew my grandparents' number. 20 something miles away, uh, street by street how to leave they showed me uh of course I was also astral traveling with them but but they showed me and in my family today is like we don't know how that happened my grandparents showed up and boy whew. but um from that point on we were I was taken out of the safety of my grandparents and we moved three hours later Raleigh North Carolina which leads me to my next one however I do want to cover this point I had nine years of trauma and sexual abuse not just sexual abuse but I had mental abuse. Now in the household, my stepdad, he was just not a nice person. He was real egotistical, narcissist type person. My mom was somewhat subservient. And with me and my sister, not so much my brother, but he talked terrible about women in particular, horrible. Oh gosh. And he would say, oh, you're so pretty. You just need to marry, you know, although I was smart, but he was just very negative. So I picked this picture because here I am. Uh, what was I, 11, 12? Okay, look how innocent I am. I'm at Christmas Day. You can see I got a Partridge family album. <laughs> totally giving away my age, but that was a good album. David Cassidy was awesome. He rocked. And then I got a, a banana seat bicycle. So here I am, an innocent little girl opening Christmas. Look how, look how I'm so innocent and I'm wearing freaking lingerie. This is not normal. This is not, I should not be wearing my mother's lingerie. I mean, this, you know, this, I didn't know, I didn't know better, but this is not normal. So this just kind of gives you an insight. This is, this is not good that you, this should not have been going on. So here we are, we moved to Raleigh, North Carolina, three hours away. And uh, this is my actually approximate age and actually the place we were. Okay. So it gets a little bit of reality and meat to it. Why, there's no trees. I mean, look at the apartment. They just built them. It was brand new. We're in a division. It was new. It was nice. But there's no trees because they just built it. There's no trees at all. And there I am. I'm, um, you know, in preschool, I'm getting ready to go into first grade next year. And so we, I have this preschool program and had to wear a little tag so you can see my mom, she's like, was really, really pretty. Her hair got even longer. She, my mom has always been really pretty. I mean, she's close to 80. She's still beautiful. All right. So this is significant. This is the day that I died, that Martin Luther King was assassinated and he died. I died, but I came back and, um, you know, I, sometimes I think about it and I feel kind of like, wow, this feels significant because it was for me. When this happened, and I want to give you a, a state of what things were going on back then. I was in the South. So you can see, I actually pulled the Raleigh Times in that day. There were riots. I mean, bad. Uh, and so you can see, and this is going to come up later, and you can see what's going on here. But in 1968, he was assassinated. And the national, they pulled a National Guard. So this comes up because when I die on the way to the hospital, 
people were not out on the roads, you would be arrested. So this is going to come back up. So just remember this. This is the state of what's going on. So what happened was this. We were in the apartment. I was getting uh, sicker and sicker and sicker for two days. I had a really high fever. And my stepdad, Ray, refused. No, we're not taking her to the hospital. We don't have any money. Well, my grandparents did. I mean, they would have worked that out. And so finally, what happened is I, I was sick. I was not eating. <clears throat> I was getting worse. So they didn't have emergency places like they do now. You had to go to the hospital or you go to your local you know, medical doctor. And so I um, uh, started becoming uh, very sluggish, kind of out of it. And uh, my mom called the hospital. They said, put her in a tub. And the temperature was high. I was kind of delusional at this point. I just really like, I was just out of it. I was kind of, I was there still, but I was out of it. So she put me in a tub of ice with water. Okay, I'm freezing already. <laughs> it was actually one of the things I remember the most. It was horrible to be in that. I mean, imagine if you're freezing, you know, when you have a flu bug and then you get in a tub of ice, it was terrible. So um, I don't know how well that worked with my temperature because uh, I don't think it did because my temperature got higher, got over 104 something. It stayed there for a long time. So she, she let me in the, the bed uh, for about an hour. She put me to bed and she came back and I was completely 100% drenched, the sheets, everything. So I hear this argument and we got to take her, we got to take her now. And it was a lot of choice words. So he had a company car that had, it was uh, KI Kicks, W-K-I-X. Uh, a lot of famous people came out of that radio station, like Wolfman Jack and several, and uh, Jay Thomas, who used to be a Murphy Brown. He's, I think he's dead now. Anyway, so they put me in the car and we were on the way to Rex Medical. And it's funny, this, by the way, how did I remember this? With near-death experiencers, they come out, I think it comes out when, the, when you, God feels you're ready to see these things. But I was never told of any of this. I, I was told I had strep throat, not that I died and had pneumonia. So when I brought this up a couple of years ago to my mom, she did not want to talk about it. So just FYI, those of you listening, sometimes your parents don't want you to know. It could be a bad memory. It could be they've got some guilt associated with that. And so she was like, how do you know all this? How do you know the name? That's the hospital. There it is right there. That's the actual hospital back then. So they worked on me, they took me when the, the, the National Guard said, we'll call ahead to the hospital, we'll make sure that, you know, you get in, and so they called ahead to the different, because there's barriers, and so when we got to the hospital, we I had a team of people, and I, at this point, I had died on the way, I'm above the last, the last leg, 15 minutes, I'm above the car looking at the riots, those riots I showed you, I'm above looking at fires, I'm really peaceful. I'm just observing. I'm not, there's no emotion attached to it. I mean, I, I, okay. I'm mildly interested in what we're doing. Okay. I am mildly interested. And so when following the car, when we get out, this team of eight or 12 people come out to get me and they have the stretcher because the national guard, they called ahead the MPs and all that, you know, when they stop, this is what's going to go. Okay. So they called, they knew I was coming. They rushed me in, they took me to this room they started putting all these things on my heart. And then I saw them uh, uh, sucking all this goop out of my chest and had this accordion looking thing that was sucking it out. And it grossed me out. I was like, this is gross. So I, I, as spirit, I was looking at it in all different directions. I was listening to them. I was like, I, this is so gross. So I left, I was bored. And I zoomed around the hospital and I saw other spirit people leaving their bodies. And I'm like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> I still do that. I talk to people all the time. You don't have to have a body for me to talk to you. And I was like, hey, and some of them seemed confused. And then even for a while there, like I tried to, to uh, help, you know, people out. One lady was having difficulty with birth and she was, she, she flatlined. A lot of people, and I think do flatline, but if they get you back, they're like, oh, I wanted to say we had difficult. We're not going to really say they were dead because um, that could be a lawsuit. So, but I did. And it was on and off back and forth. And the doctor went to my mother and said, we're having a difficult time getting her vitals. But my mom didn't know what that meant. She goes, oh, oh okay. And so she was upset and she was, she was crying, but she didn't fully understand what, how bad it was or what was going on. But my lungs had collapsed. And actually you do see layers of things coming out to your ready for this to happen. And actually it was with Dr. Kaysen um, that I saw they covered me with a sheet. 
I don't know why that's upsetting, but it was, there was kind of final, right? But uh, not really, here I am. <laughs> but the medical tech saw that I still had activity. And so they went back in, they ended up putting me on a breathing uh, tent. I was in a tent and I remember all of that. And I remember waking up and who was there, but they put me in an induced coma because my lungs had collapsed. And the bonus for me, I get to spend it with Jesus three days. So, you know, hey, this is great. I mean, no complaints here because this, this was the bond of a lifetime eternity with him because he is awesome. <laughs> and so um, what happened was I go into the, to the, um, to the room where I am. And I see two, I see before I'm in the heaven place, I see a, a Catholic, I knew they were Catholic, even though we weren't, my grandmother was Presbyterian, but again, not very religious family, but I knew they were. And the found out later that Rex Hospital was started by Catholics, it was a Catholic thing. But anyway, it was a nun and it was a priest. And the woman said, she's holding a rosary and she, they're spirit people. Okay, man, are they committed to their job? <laughs> they said, blessed are the innocent. And I'm like, okay. And then I look and there was the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful smile I've ever seen in my life. And we had, oh my God, I just can't wait to see it again. And it was Jesus. And it was so funny because he was holding my hand and he was kneeling beside me and he had beautiful teeth, beautiful dimples. He had this light source emanating. It was beautiful. And he's beautiful. And his eyes were, to me, people go about his eyes. I mean, yeah, they're probably brown in life, but all I know is they were this beautiful blue and green. They were just so, uh, I just felt like everything was going to be okay. And I looked at him and I said, you're that man I talked to. Because my grandmother told me if I need anything to talk to him, he goes, I am. He said that he had something he wanted to give me. And I said, a toy. And he thought that was funny. He said, no. And he took part of his rope belt and he wrapped something around my left wrist, like a friendship bracelet. And then I'll go into the next thing, what he said. But anyway, I, and I'll talk about the flowers and see what is it here. Okay. So he, he put it around my wrist and he said, much is given, much will give. And he started talking about that his, um, that his love and power and wisdom would flow through me. And then he said, I had to go back. I said, and then I saw all these children that were on um, those uh, go rounds that you would push around. And I said, it was like a little park. And I said, well, they're here. Why can't I stay? And he said, you have to go back. And so I said, well, I said, come on, please, please, please. And he's like, no, but we can talk for a while. So we walked and as we walked every blade of grass, every flower, the clouds followed him. I was even going, wow, does he know that's going on? So we walked around and he's, began talking to me. And then we went and sat in front of this very big tree that I do believe is the tree of life now. And he said, we'll talk for a while. He said, we don't eat from this tree. And, and by the way, the colors were beyond the spectrum that's here. It was, you could, it, it was the right temperature. Everything was perfect. It was beautiful. And the, the tree, the tree of life, it looked like cherry blossoms with uh, grapes on them. And it was really pretty. So it was kind of a mixture. And he said, we don't eat from that. And he told me, uh, he started talking about questions that I had. And he started talking about how we create here and we create in heaven instantly, but on earth, it takes time. So we need to be mindful of what we say, because what we say, we manifest and we have to make sure we keep speaking positive. So it sticks and that happens and the, the proper things happen that we want. And he said, but here it's quick. If you want to do something, I said, well, like what? He, and, he, and I, can I try? He said, sure. So I visualized us in a little boat. We were in a little boat and then three little fish came up to us and he picked one up and he talked to it and he said, hello and talked to it and put it back down. He goes, this is how we fish here. Uh, I thought that was really sweet, but he answered a lot of questions that I had and I didn't want to leave him. And he did tell me I had to go back and he was talking about love. And he said that my mother needed me. She had so little love for herself that I had more love to give her. And I asked him, I said, well, how, how do I show someone I love them? And he goes, well, there's many ways to do that. And he said, that's something I know a little about. And I think that's kind of funny now. He's always been very funny with me. And so he get, told me certain things and I thought it was important to put this down. Uh, he's very funny with me. Okay. And I'm not trying to be sacrilegious or whatever, but he is not, as I know him, he is not 
yeah, he's Jesus, the one in the Bible, but he's not so stiff. Like you see these, like in these drawings or these Roman, nothing against Roman Catholics. I, I, I love Catholics. It's great, but that's, he doesn't look scrawny like that. I mean, he looked very healthy. He had muscles. He was lean. He was very vibrant and very charming. And you think for him to walk to earth and talk to all kinds of people, he had to kind of have to be. So he told me, that understanding comes from suffering. I said, I can't go back. Uh, what happened before I died? The abuse got so bad. And I tried to tell my mom and she would leave and go work at Kelly Girl as a temp agent. Uh, she'd do secretarial. I said, don't leave me with that man. See, I didn't have the words. And I said, don't leave me with that man. I used to hide under the bed and be pulled out underneath. I tried locking myself in the closet, putting coat hangers, trying to stab him. I'm little, you know, it didn't really work. So um, now I'm a hop keto woman. So, you know, it would work now. <laughs> but back then I was just a little person. So he, I said, I can't go back to this. And I actually prayed for Jesus to kill my dad. I didn't kill like as a human terms. I didn't know what that meant. And then I started thinking, gee, I think that's bad. <laughs> so I said, that's okay. Just take me. And I really wanted to die because I could not do whatever this was, you know, being held down and stuff. I could not do this. And so he told me, he said, and we are eternal spiritual beings. So it's not like we live forever. Do, did I choose this to do this? I think we choose lessons, like my opinion on this, because some of those, I don't want to get anyone upset over this, but I think, do we choose a lesson of getting cancer or this? No, we don't, but we choose maybe to learn humility. We don't know what form it comes. So he told me understanding comes from suffering. He said, it purifies the soul to grow and to be able to serve God and others more compassionately. And I will tell you, that I am a lot more compassionate, understanding to people. And I can also, they, they, they can't feed me any line. I'm like, look, I've been there. I understand. <laughs> Get over it, you know, quit being a victim. So I can say these things. He also told me that, you know, like I said earlier, much is given, much will give. And he said that, he, that God's light would shine through me and I would be an example of his power and will. And as a kid, I'm like, okay, what's that mean? <clears throat> Now, a lot of this came through, I'll have to tell you through, I'm a big fan of regression. It came through again. I was like, I don't know if this will work, worked <laughs> like, like uh, gangbusters, but he told me this. And I thought it was important because this is a thing that runs through this, uh, my talk today is that in, in my life too, <laughs> this is kind of my life. He said through the small things, the big things would be accomplished. And so that's really a lot in life. We overlook the small things and that'll come up later, but that's a, that was a big deal. And then Jesus talked about, you know, again, we, how like we create, he also said he wanted help bringing heaven to earth. And I argued, I said, yeah, that really seems like a lot of work. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I did do that with him. And he thought that was funny. And he goes, yeah, but I'm not the only one doing this. He said, you're not alone in this task or other people doing it. And a lot of the people that are doing this with me, I'm talking to right now. So thanks for the help. He told me that, uh, I, that I would let people know heaven is real. Well, the higher level mediumship stuff I do, that's evidential. It does let people know that they are not dead. They're very much so alive and in spirit form with God. And then he also talked about that this world has forgotten to laugh. And I thought it was like a disease because I was a kid. I didn't know like, why have they forgotten to laugh? And he said, they've taken themselves very seriously. He said, but I think you can help with that. And I knew, I was like, yeah, I can help with that. Cause I was very silly. I like the silly dance and all of that. I need to do more of that, but I was always that way. And so he also told me, be love, receive love and give love for in the end, there is that in the end, that is all there ever was and why we're here anyway. So age 10. Um, and we're moving along age 10. I had a drowning in a pool at Myrtle Beach. Uh, basically, I was in the pool. This is the actual day. That's not below. That's just a volleyball picture, just to give an example. But that's my mom and my sister. That was the day. She was in the baby. She was in the baby pool with my sister. I was in the pool next door watching teenage boys at 10 years old play volleyball. I like, I like boys. And so I got hung up underneath there and they didn't know that I was there and I couldn't get up. It was, it was a very crowded pool. So I started seeing a light underneath and it just, it, it was horizontal and then it opened up and I started seeing this brilliant light through the water and hearing a very lavish, peaceful choir of angels. I mean, it was just angels like, ah, like you would imagine. And 
I felt this love. I felt this peace. And I did go, not again. I did. I do remember going, oh my, not again. And so I just remember waking up in a lifeguard and choking and water coming out, people kind of looking. And then my mom walked over and go, what'd you do now? And I'm like, really didn't have anyone to talk to about that. So I had to kind of, you know, keep these on ice. And so the, the other one, when I was older, I was 33, I had a reaction to a prescription pill for menstrual migraines. And, but, you know, I, I took, it, it just didn't go over and I took the pill and I woke up one night, it's like an alarm went off and I was rose from the dead. It was like Frankenstein. And I could not, I don't know why, but I could not control my motor skills. And I looked later on and the same thing's like a psych drug he gave me. I'm like, what kind of an idiot, you know? But anyway, it was a medic, it was some kind of medical doctor. But if something doesn't feel right in your body, I say, don't take it. So anyhow, um, I'm, I wake up, I can't talk. I can't wake up my husband. And so I go into the living room, turn on the TV, thinking if my consciousness can follow the TV and I can figure this out, it'll be okay. And I sit there and I start hearing that white noise sound like, <laughs> and then I feel this instant fear which I know what follows that, I don't care. So that's, that's kind of what happened. But before that happened, I started, it happened all at the same time. I started seeing the furniture decompose into lines. Uh, uh, a friend of mine told me that's one of the uh, levels at the Monroe Institute, but I, I didn't know that. But the, everything turned into lines like the matrix. And it was, it was breaking down. It was dissolving, uh, decoding, whatever you want to call it, breaking down. And then I saw myself sitting on the sofa and I didn't know it was male or female and I didn't know my name. I, this, <laughs> I'm thinking this can't be good. And then I manned the galaxy. And then I remember going to the Milky Way. I remember that. And I was just was observing. I was very peaceful, but then I also was sitting on the sofa. I was both. So I poked my finger into the side of my leg to bring myself back because I knew it wasn't like my head was cut off. I could survive this. And then I complained afterwards and all that, but I made it through, but this was a different one. Now I'm going to get into a little bit about my, uh, my after effects, as far as my spiritually transformative experiences, paranormal, paranormal activity. This was, um, some of it, uh, well, I didn't like some of it, but it just was. And so as a child, I would see, Again, I've seen angels. I have all, uh, so many stories. And I, I was asked to write Ray Hernandez's book. Thank you, uh, Dr. Von Case and Robert Bear <laughs> for introducing me. That's just something that happened. But I have written it and it's, it's in there. And it's about 35 pages of all these odd, unusual, normal things to me. So I won't go into too much. But I will say that um, angels, I've always seen them as, um, I've seen them, seen them. But I've also seen them regularly now as colors. I see them on the wall as colors. I'll feel their presence. I'll feel their energy. I've been in places with ghosts and I lay the law down. I'm like, look, I know you're here. You know who I am. I know who you are. I respect you. You respect me, you know, because they can touch and do and they can harm. And so I have boundaries very much. So as a kid, I would see, because I had such early near-death experiences, I would see, <clears throat> especially when I was praying, I... Well, sometimes I would pray and then I pray a lot more after that, but I would see demons and I would see these look like black humanoid things crawl on the wall with tadpole. They had like a tadpole, um, you know, but they were humanoid. They were really black and they had red eyes and they had teeth all the way uh, sharp, all the way from one side to the other. And since then, I've done about 17 deliverances. I've seen eyes go black. I've heard voices change. I've seen things levitate. I just want to say this because this is real. This kind of stuff is real. And this, this is why I feel like, and I'll get into this a little bit later, but if you are, if you are getting in into any kind of spiritual practice or especially um, my thoughts on mediumship, I personally, and other people probably agree, uh, disagree with me, that you should not be doing this unless you're prepared to handle that because inevitably this is gonna come up because you're seeing all things. So uh, God has given me discernment. And that's one of the things that, um, you know, I think is critical in that. And again, ghost, I, I've had um, Father Nathan Castle on and he does a lot of it, but I have two crossing over ghost. I actually did that at the Edgar Casey Center when I was there and we were teaching and it was some woman's dad who refused to cross over. And we did like a counseling session with 200 people in the room. 
and we I taught everybody how to beautifully cross the person over and we did a little healing and for both parties it was really beautiful so but they can be a problem too because they don't have to cross and all that and angels they watch over us all the time the demon things they try to trick people but I've always been given their names who they are what they're doing in the place I've been offered several tv shows I don't work with the dark I, so forget it there's no amount of money or whatever you know I hang with Jesus that's where that's who that's who my person is and I don't do that so getting to the mediumship this is the very thing that I thought that I would not do but I was talking to spirit at three and communicating but again they were people that I some I knew and I love, they're just like us. They were regular people that just had crossed over and they felt like they were my friends because I didn't really have the support that uh, from you know my family life, I didn't have the guidance. That's why I always say Jesus was my father. So even though that I was born this way, I think that the NDEs, I definitely, definitely believe that that allowed me the layers of the veil, the etheric bodies were just gone because I was spirit. So I think that because of that, I don't have the filters and I can see into a little bit more. And, but I did train, I did pray about it. Uh, it was about really 14 years, honestly, 14 years. And I got an answer. Uh, not think, Things don't always take that long, but it did for me. And I was told to move out of my advertising agency business and to do this. And God was trying to talk to me and I didn't get it. And Jesus showed up and he started explaining things to me. And I said, oh no, I don't want to be seen as a charlatan. He goes, so then you won't. And I haven't. And I've met incredibly beautiful people and helped a lot, hopefully. And he's of course, always there with me doing this work. And I only work with the higher level people. And I tell them that. Now I want to explain about mediumship really quick. So for some people, it has a, a dirty word to me. It's just being between two worlds. So I see spirit people, I see all different types of things. Uh, again, the lower level ones, I said, uh, uh, there's a boundary thing going on, but I also connect to people that are living. There's many times at night I ask for travel. People come to me and say, Tamara, you told me these things. I'm like, yeah, I probably did. And coma patients come through all the time. I just did an interview where the, the, a woman who was another one that was totally alive. I said, you got an aunt, so-and-so in Florida. And they look kind of, I said, I know she's, she's still alive. She's in the retirement place there. She loves it. And he's, and the person's looking like that. This is how I see it. If you come in as a child, right? We're a baby. What are we closer to this world or the other side? The other side, as we get to be 80 or 90, are we closer to this world or the other side? That's why when you, you've seen old people sleep a lot and they'll wake up from a dream and go, oh, you know, I had this crazy dream where I saw my first boyfriend or whatever. And they're actually connecting with people on their side. God is preparing them. He is a beautiful process. So you don't have to be dead. We're connecting with consciousness. Now, my biggest spiritual moment that I think I've ever had was on the way to a Hall and Oates concert. <laughs> I'm serious. And it was so funny because Jesus, before I was going to bed last night, said, put this picture up. He said, get one with some really big 80s hair. I was like, okay. This is my conversations with Jesus. And I literally almost forgot this. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. So um, he, I think the date that this happened to uh, was on a Thursday, July 17, 2017. It's because I don't remember dates. So this was easy to kind of remember 17, 17. I think that's why he did this. But uh, we were on the way to a Hall concert summertime. Uh, it was beautiful outside. It didn't get dark till 9 p.m. So here we are about 6.15 p.m. bright. Everything's great. Uh, we're going uptown Charlotte. Most people have uh, gone home from work uh, because it's 615. And so here we are looking for a parking place. I'm looking to the right. And in Charlotte, if you don't find your place, you've got to circle the city again. So you want to find your parking place. And my husband's looking to the left. I'm looking to the right. I uh, remember even the dress, I had a long man God mandala with big mint God mandalas all over. I remember a long sundress. And I, and I remember that day. It was funny why that dress, because it wasn't just a dress. It had like images of, you know, the God mandala. And so I'm looking to the right and looking, and then I'm not paying attention. Really, I'm not thinking of anything else. I, I don't want us to pass a place because you have to pay for parking. And so out of the blue, I, I like Tourette's go <laughs> just shout out my Lord, just like that. Yeah. Totally like Tourette's. And then I look really teeny in the distance in the middle of the, 
um, the uh, medium, the grass area in between the roads, I look and I see a little figure. My soul knew before my mind and I saw it. And it was, it was Jesus. Okay. I, I mean, it real shocked to me. <laughs> and so really little, I'm like, no way, no way. And as we get closer, I'm first of all, I'm going through all this stuff and it's moving slow. So it's not fast. This, this went on three or four minutes. I got a good look. And so I felt it. It was, and I, I couldn't comprehend it because it, it blew my mind a little bit. Uh, but it, but my soul knew it. And as we got closer and I looked at the outfit and, all, and so forth, I kept thinking of all the things this just has to be instead. So he had hair that was long. He, it was uh, brown with caramel highlights in it. He was, had a very clean shaven face. He had a coppery skin, greenish blue eyes, um, piercing, piercing. And he had on a dark brown khaki pants. He had on sandals, but not Jesus sandals like you think. He just had two little simple straps. And that leather matched his pants. And I asked him later, he said, he said, well, of course I'd match with you. <laughs> I'm a stickler for that. And so he had on a tunic that was right to his, uh, I guess it was his calf with a pocket and it was linen. It was white. It looked modern, but not like I could say he bought it at this particular place. Yeah, I couldn't say. And matter of fact, what was interesting is Sharon Melman also seen Jesus in the flesh like me. He had the same outfit on with her, which I thought that was really unusual. So as I got closer and I'm looking at him, I'm looking for markings like tattoos, uh, anything on the hands, jewelry. He looked like a model. He looked perfect. Honestly, he didn't look like anyone I know. He didn't look Caucasian. I don't know what he looked like. He was beautiful, though. He was radiant. And as I look at him, I'm now over the seat, this, the seat of my husband, like gawking. I mean, I'm, I'm like in this altered state, like, oh my gosh. And I'm realizing it's him. So I'm laughing and crying at the same time. And as I look at him, most people would think, what's your problem? Or they'd laugh. Is that I saw the face of purity. He looked at me and through me with purity and the most calm love and, and he was flesh. I saw grass around his sandals. He was 100% flesh, 100%. And I slapped my husband back and said, look. And then I turned back and he was gone that quick. Why he showed up, I don't know, but I'll take it because it was awesome. He can do those things. So in March of 2020, he told me he wanted me to carry his messages. And I went, no, thank you. <laughs> and he asked me again. And I was like, you know, I just don't feel comfortable, you know, telling people what you're saying because, you know, here it starts. They're going to like judge and all this. He said, are you more worried about them or me? And I went, uh, totally you. So he asked me again. It started uh, March 17th. It started again. And by the 20th, I said, oh, OK, I'll do it. I was like not sold on this at all. And I remember doing a Zoom. I had like 75 people on, a lot of more into years. I'm like, they're nosy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh gosh, how's this going to go? So I channeled live, which I don't like that because I just hear his voice and just tell you what I'm hearing. But I don't like that because I make a, I'm kind of, I'm in a trance. I mean, I'm still talking, but I am. And I look weird. So I don't really like that. So I did that a couple of times. I was really stressing out badly for months over doing this. I did this uh, from March to July and there was 15 limited series and you can see it as on my thing and it's on the website here but I did that and it was amazing because I would get scripture like I didn't know Timothy one I'm like all right I'll write it down and I would get the message he Jesus said look I can I don't need to wake you up in the middle of the night anymore for two hours why don't we just sit comfortably and when you're ready I'll just tell you I went we can do that okay so I'd listen to him he correct me if I didn't say it right I'd write it down and he'd say you know Timothy Revelations 1, 3, or I, I, like, I don't know what that is. Even though I'm a Christian minister, I don't know the scripture that well, you know. So like, because, you know, it's, it's to me, it's more spiritual. But anyway, so I, I'm like, all right. They were exactly what he said <laughs> every time. One time I shook, the vibration of God was so intense. So he answered a lot of things that's going on now. It was, it blew my mind. All right. So let's talk about this channeling thing. A lot of people think this is a dirty word. I must preference that I thought this whole cha channeling is where I hear information. And like, okay, passing it along. I thought it was ridiculous. I thought it was, I was a massive skeptic and I still am quite honestly. 
I think a lot of people that that that's that might channel, you know, re ra from the whatever, you know, Viking or whatever. You don't know who you're talking to. You'd be talking to a demon. But see, because I work with Jesus and I let him, I let him, I don't let spirit people get get all near me in that close. I just have him standing over there, but I let him get that close. So he brings me people because it feels really good. And he brings me people all the time. So this started happening. I'm like, what is this? It was happening in dreams. I'm like, and they were very high level. They were saints. I mean, Jesus is not Jesus to me. I'm just going to tell you, he's top dog. He's exactly who he says he is. My opinion, he is the son of God. That's my opinion, because he, <laughs> there's an order and there was an order there. However, there's a lot of holy people there, all religions, all types, all kinds. You know, there really is. And, and some people connect to others. I get that. So this started happening. And since then, I've had visions of Mother Mary, not even Catholic. I know who she is. Uh, she's come through giving me detail, giving me scripture, giving me things. She's um, uh, come through in readings with detail, with evidence for people that only that they know. Jesus comes through quite a lot with evidential things that only that person and them have discussed because I'm an evidential medium. So they know they better give it to me. Some of the Google got, you better give it, we can prove this. So they know that about me already. Yogananda came through about five years ago and I'm embarrassed of those who follow him. I didn't know who he was. Okay. I, I, I didn't know, but he had the sweetest face. He had the most beautiful face and he reminded me a lot of Jesus, but he is a little sweeter than Jesus because Jesus can be like a really funny and a smart aleck, but Yogananda, uh, I was reading a lady that goes to India all the time and he came through and also one of her living masters came through. So, because that was special to her. George Harrison hangs out with Jesus and Mother Mary. Don't ask me, but a lot. I'm not the only one. This is, check it out. I'm not the only one. This is why I think in some past life that George Harrison could have been his brother. I don't know the, you know, I'm just, I can't prove it, but he's come through and talked to me about don't spend so much time being so ascended. He said, because he was, and he said he had this campus with the nuns and non campus or something like this. And he said, he'd build it and he couldn't leave. He'd only have his friends there. He could only eat certain kinds of food. And he didn't even take pleasure from music anymore because he was so ascended. He said, you're just going to work yourself right out of this world. He said, enjoy the simple things, go garden, be with your family, do this, do that, go on walk. So, and then St. Ignatius came through with a donkey one night when I was sleeping. Jesus said, he's my friend. I'm like, who is this guy? I didn't even, cause you know, I'm not Catholic. So I didn't know. Talk to him. A guy came through last week. This is really interesting. I was doing a live show, two hour show with uh, South Africa. And there was an Indian guy in there because I had people all over the world, right? And he said, well, can you tell me, you know, I did a talk at the end. She said, you know, people have questions. Can you tell me if there's anyone around me? I was like, I don't know. I'll see. And I said, well, there, and I got, it. it was a holy person. It was an Indian holy person. And they had a bowl and I'm looking, he's got the same bowl, but this bowl was bigger and taller and he had incense in it and uh, was praying. So there's a holy man. I said, his name is Roma, and he, I said, it's like an R and he goes, and, but his real name is Ramanaju, Ramanaja. And I said, that's him. And he goes, I've been reading his book and he gave a beautiful message to him again. They're from that holy place, but I had to find out who the guy was. So I looked him up on wiki and it says here, he helped write the bog, the bog, Bhagavad Gita. Okay. He also believed in who's a little different than the others that there's one one personal god and that he talked about spiritual liberation and the soul and the metaphysical the ultimate reality and the unity of all souls coming together for the one god to realize their potential and brahman so i thought this is kind of guy i'd like to get to know and i didn't even know who it was now i've had sai baba come through and talk about producing ashes and i was talking to a lady and said she saw him and he produced ashes in his hand. So he's come through. So it's evidential. Einstein's come through and actually has written in a book. This uh, a client of mine. He came through, you know, his family came through. And at the end he did. And he was crying and laughing. He's like, go ahead. But he was finishing Einstein's book on relativity. And the information he got with acceleration also how to build a star. Okay. I don't know what is it. It's universal consciousness. It's the Akashic records. He told him through me. So well, there's a whole chapter I channeled on you know, look, I know it sounds crazy, but these people are very nice and Jesus brings them to me and they give me evidence. Now I got Tesla coming through talking about how to help 
he's come through in dreams a lot. I said, Tesla, I don't really know you that well. So he's been telling me things. And he, um, he said that he wanted to have free energy for everybody. And he talked about frequency and uh, energy. And then he, he, wrote, he wrote a bunch of stuff down. I wrote it down, what he said. And about uh, biotransluminescent, he said, that's what gears the ships and spacecrafts. And he said, that's the energy. He said, they wanted me, they wanted to control the corporations and I wouldn't take their money. That's what he told me. So he's coming through. <laughs> what does this mean? I don't know, but it's great. I got to tell you, it's really great. We do get help from the other side. I always say we have a fan club in heaven. We do. So now that brings us to the star seed stuff. We're moving along right on time. And so the, uh, this is all new to me. Okay. So I started having guests on my show in March and <laughs> I thought it was, uh, I mean, I would say a joke. I mean, I don't want to say it's a joke, but you know, it was interesting, but it wasn't real to me. And I think it was a Craig Camp of Bose. It was a really good interview. And he wrote a book on the intergalactic species almanac. So I bought it for my candle because I thought I better be prepared. And I'm reading it like, yeah, okay, this is <laughs> all right. Mildly entertaining. And as I'm reading it, I'm going, oh my God, this is real. This is channeled. Oh my God. And I asked him, he goes, yeah, it is. And he, and I, and I said, what is this? And I said, you're not human, are you? He goes, no, I'm Palladian. I said, I don't know what that is. And so three days later, I was getting healing from South Africa from a woman, Fiona, a lot of people, you know, her now um, that really nice lady, but she said, um, we had this healing that I was recommending. I said, do you work with God? Do you know, Jesus, she said, yeah. She said, but I'm Pleiadian. I said, okay, two Pleiadians. I want to wake up. I was like, well, you know, wh what does that mean? She goes, oh, we just, we love God and we want uh, love and unity and we want to help people through. And they're really into this DNA thing. So I was like, all right, if it helps my energy. So I ended up getting a DNA activation. <laughs> I didn't know that. And what that means is this, it's kind of like being a sleeper cell. So if someone said the word hot dog, then you turn into like this, like, you know, <laughs> kick and butt kind of like, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, train, uh, martial artist or something. And so literally I instantly, I started seeing I was blue, a being of light. It was not a meat body like this, but I was a blue, uh, really pretty color. And, um, I, the second one, I absolutely knew that I was Syrian. I was also told I was an angelic celestial being that worked for the office of Christ. I've also had past life was a really famous regressionist and that's come up again. <laughs> So it, I'm human now, uh, and it's, you know, with all the pains and all the stuff, whatever this, but we, uh, the way I look at that is earth is relatively young. There are planets, there are other things. God made them all. I do think that we'll ask, uh, this woman and I said, well, you know, about earth that this is a lower level, uh, this is a lower level. There are higher levels but we're here to make a difference. All of you that are watching are here making a difference. So now I have instant memory and recall. I have done about 300 and something past life regression. Did not believe that worked, totally worked. And I, this is before this recent stuff. I've seen Octurian and all this stuff, but you know, honestly, I was like, huh, eh, I was kind of bored with that. I was like, whatever. And now in dreams I'm getting, I thought they were dreams and I had Preston Denton on my uh, channel he is a, he's written like 27, 28 books on UFOs and he's a researcher and he started laughing. And I went, I told him in between a break, he goes, it's not a dream. I have them all the time too. You're visiting them. I was like, oh gosh. But so Jesus works with this galactic federation guy, Aster. Now I'm getting Chiron about magnetic, sir, about the magnetic and the planet and what the, what's going on and how I finished my grids around the planet. Uh, and I didn't even know about that. And so now they're coming through, but it's just a higher level, a different dimension. Now, after this, my third DNA, I started seeing freaking huge UFOs. <laughs> this is my world. So uh, my husband, who's a normal person, actually saw the first one with me and he pointed it out and we were on our way. It was August 15th. We we're going to take a four day break and go to Asheville, North Carolina. We had a uh, uh, one of those, you know, Airbnb places, you know, rented, we were taking the two shizus, we were going to go and we're getting like, we take everything when we get blenders, everything, you know, so we're get, you know, we're going like, it's late. It's, it's, you know, we don't leave till quarter to seven. So it's right around eight o'clock and it's dark. Okay. And, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I guess it's, yeah, right around, it's getting kind of, yeah, it's right. Let me a little after eight. So I'm seeing, we're on the highway and my husband goes, look, 
and it was huge. I mean, huge. It was huge. It looked like a ball of fire and it was kind of moving. I had no fear at all. No, you know, I don't deal with the lower level spirits and I don't deal with these lower level grays. I don't trust the little bastards or the rest of the land to sand. But this is, this is not what I felt at all. And I looked and I went, oh gosh. And I felt love and it's a strange reaction. I was very happy and I saw more in the back and he was looking at it. People said, why didn't you get your phone? I was just so happy. I was like, well, I wanted them to land. I was so upset they didn't land. So when we left, uh, I had Mary Rodwell on my show who's a famous UFO researcher. And she said, well, every time you see a UFO, you get a download. I said, how do you, you really? She goes, I know this. I said, well, like what? She goes, oh, something. So I came back and started getting Morse code through my computer, like little, and now uh, I started drawing light codes. Uh, I'll show you those. And then in October, this uh, two months later, it, they could have shown up uh, September too. I didn't put it together. They came the same time and I was getting takeout and I was driving home and I looked kind of to the side and I thought it was a helicopter. It was a freaking mothership. And I mean, huge, like Richard Dreyfus close encounters in my backyard. And it had, uh, but it had lights. Like, you know how crystal has iridescent lights and it's coming off of it. This was coming off of it and the bottom. And it shot me because I had to say, what am I looking at? You know, I, I was, I, what am I looking at? And I went, that's not normal. <laughs> so I called my husband, get out there. There's a UFO mothership in the backyard. <laughs> He's running out there. And then I drive up and then it, it just disappears. It's like the, it didn't have to go anywhere. It just was gone. So the next one, or these are the light codes. I don't see a picture of it and draw it. I just kind of just start drawing. I just start doing this. It's just like my hand just starts going. So I'm doing these light codes and I don't really know what they are. I've never even looked at a light code. I didn't know what one is. I have done a slight amount of research. I really um, don't know about all this. And it says it's secret. <laughs> of course it is. And so um, like the one that manifests, you can see it looks like manifest and also like the crop circles. And there's also a documentary called the series disclosure that I didn't know about till, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, but it is similar. I was told recently, and, you know, they just started telling me this, the Syrian light council now, they said that this, that manifestation, they're trying to help us, they can't get too involved, but they said that these are actual living, and now I'm seeing numbers and sacred geometry, and I'm seeing them move into things, so what does this mean? I have no freaking clue, I don't feel any fear, and Jesus is right with me, but I don't know what it means, so in review, this is what I've learned from the astral plane. Life on earth is an agreed upon structure held together through energy forms. We decide what, so if we all decided, oh, we don't want to be here, we'd be gone. Our thoughts manifest into reality through spoken words and intentions, okay? Spirits are us. We are spirit. We are the soul. The body's optional. I mean, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. I don't get upset with spirit people because at some point we'll be spirit again, and we're still the same person. We still are very conscious in our thinking. Spirits were human. Upon physical death, they become limitless beyond time and space. There's things we can do. We don't have to be dead to do these things. We can actually, you know, I don't try to astral travel. I don't try to do all this. I don't try to, I don't try to do any of this stuff. I mean, I'll actually, I go in very skeptical, but I, I trust what God has for me and I don't live in fear, but I don't think you should be doing stuff and, you know, unless it, it feels right in your heart and you're led to that. In heaven, there is no time. So I see it as, you know, there's only moments and now that we have really honestly here, but in heaven, the eternity to me means things are eternally in a state of beauty. There is no decay. And finally, the angelic and higher level spiritual realms, they know what we're thinking. They want to support. I can't help not to, they're in spirit and they know who we are and they care. Before I ever do a reading, the, the, the other people's family know all about me. My grandma over there made the connections. It's, oh, Tamara, make sure you're, you know, handled correctly. <laughs> no, serious. They know. They, it's just kind of like when you're a child and your mother knew you who you're playing with or whatever. They know. They know what we're doing and they love us. They're very concerned because they know it's not easy here. So life goes on in heaven. It comes through evidentially all the time. They actually do stuff there. They play, they ride motorcycles, they do things. They, they absolutely do. And I've, I could, there's so much evidence in that I could give. So God created many other worldly dimensions and astral planes. 
So again, I cling uh, close to Jesus. I don't need to know everything. I'm sure one day it'll all be, you know, exposed to me. I'm fine with that. I realize that we're probably not the only ones. Upon death, people go to where their mindset is, like attract lights. Jesus told me this. He said, if you're sick in the mind, where you go with other people like that. He said, he's always there to help them to cross over, to be with them. His love is always abundantly welcome with no judgment. Spirits place a greater value upon life's simple memories. This comes up a lot, which goes to the next thing, which is we underestimate the impact we have on each other's lives. And I'll give you a very quick, short example. And I, and I want you to reflect upon your life and the just simple things and the strangers that you've met that you've helped. There was a, there was a, you know, a spiritual session I had with a, a guy and there was this man that kept coming through and the guy didn't know who he was. I'm like, I don't know who he is. I said, he's talking about, he, you saw him in a municipality building. You would come every two weeks and you would pick up something from him. And finally the guy goes, my sitter, he goes, oh my God, it can't be. I said, well, who is it? And I describe he's blonde haired, you'd laugh, real nice, get along. He's like, I was going to pick up my unemployment check. And I said, it was six months. He goes, yeah, for six months. And I talked to this guy. The man told him, he said, I had no friends. I had no family. I, I was a recluse. I had a cat. And the only thing that I looked forward to was our conversations and how you made me feel that I counted. And I love you. And I thank you. Another one that real quick that came up was a janitor <laughs> and I was doing a stage show and this man came through and it's like a dad and the, and the woman's like, oh my gosh, he was the janitor. He used to give me school money to help me out. And I knew him seven years. So he's still following her like a little angel looking out for her. And she was so touched because she remembered him. So we're all connected. We need to be nicer to one another. We need to care for one another. It's an illusion that we are not we did not come from the source of all, which is God, and God is all powerful. So in closing, I am working on my book. I'm halfway there. It was on a hiatus because my mother was still living, but honestly, I don't want to cry, but since I've met Dr. Von Kaysen and Robert Bear, and I love you guys so much, and Linda, you're awesome, um, that I've stepped out, and I'm telling you to step out. Be bold. Jesus tells me that all the time. I'm going to finish my freaking book. And it's going to be awesome. And I started that already. So you'll know when it's out. And then finally, in closing, I want to leave this little full word because I told everybody I'd leave a little message from Jesus. Everybody, you know, they want, they're curious what that is. So here it is. This is the full word. I wanted to have something important. And Jesus gave me the full word of my book. And that is his message. For it is not heaven or earth that divides us, but the intolerances we have with each other. For love is always tolerant, kind, and looks for the greater outcome for all concern. After all is said and done, life is everlasting. God is, you are, and I am. We are all connected to something greater than just ourselves. It's not just about you. Life is more than segments of a particular life is more than segments of a particular moments in time, but combined simultaneous actions occurring without time and limits to work for the greater good of God's will. For his will is always perfect, Jesus. And if you want to contact me for any reason, uh, if you want to be a guest on my show, or, or if you want me to be a guest, or you just have a question, there's my contact information. Thank you so much for listening and your time. It's been my honor. Wow. Tamara, that's, you know, I've known you for five years, but the sharing you just gave me added so much depth and breath for me to understand who you are. And I want to thank you for all you have to share. Um, I'm just going to, wonderful, a lot of depth. Um, we do have a few questions coming up. And I don't know if you noticed, I just got into a coughing spell, but I'm going to get this started with questions and if there are okay. other questions so I can add to this. First one is as a medium, who speaks to the higher spiritual realms. What is the message you, you keep hearing for us, the living here on earth? Always, always is the same thing, is to live your life with no regrets, 
because when they come through, a lot of people will, will say, well, why didn't say this and that and the way they pass away? They don't care about that. They're, they're hanging out with God and Jesus and all that and all those saints and angels and people they love. They don't care. I mean, they just care about us because they know that we're in the thick of it. So it's always live your life to the fullest without regrets. If something feels right, but you're a little frightened, that means you need to do it like me doing this today because it helps grow my soul. That's why we're here. We got to get this. Otherwise, I don't, I don't like a redo. I don't want to take third grade again over. Yeah, I can appreciate that. I can feel that as you express some of the stuff, some of your encounters, we, I could feel the emotion coming through you for the reality of the messages. I got another question here, and this is from Robert Bear. Um, are the colors you mentioned that are really brilliant, are these colors different from the ones we see on Earth? the blue, green, et cetera, are they at colors that do not exist in this realm or on earth? Um, there are, I think it's this, it's interesting because I am a designer. So and I, yeah, as you can tell behind me, I like colors, <laughs> love colors. So um, it is a lot more that's on earth, but it's more than that. It's our perception and our depth of our perception is such that it, we're the living color. Yeah, it was a band in the eighties, but we're the living color. And so we're, we're, we are able to, to look at colors. So I think as the colors change or we change because we're able to see it, the color is also vibrating with a, with a brilliancy and a, and a, and a sounds corny, but a love vibration. So we're able to see it in depth and layers, almost like instead of looking at something a flat um, image, like in a kaleidoscope was dimensional. We're able to look at dimension and colors and emotion with color. So there's more of a, a connection to that and a frequency, just like when I see my angels, they come in colors. I think it's a frequency. That's all. Are there really colors or it's just my perception? There's probably no, there, there may not be colors. It's my perception is heightened. But I think that rates, uh, you know, because if our colors are on wavelengths or sounds are on wavelengths, colors are yeah similar too um the next one is, is a comment but it's from anna C cecilia gonzalez one of our advisory board members when you were showing those figures of uh, the doodlings that you've had since you started your extraterrestrial encounters she wrote down i've been doing those figures many times too i don't know what they mean but i know they must mean something some of them are very similar to yours so you're not thank alone you. there. Well, thank you for sharing. And I will say the thank you for coming out uh, as a real person and saying that I won't say names, but I've talked to three, three multiple near-death experiencers. Like, I also remember being angelic being, and I see these codes and I've been on that ship. What does it mean? I don't know. You know, I'm evolving. So I'll, I'll let you know when I figure it out, <laughs> but uh, a lot of India years only like talking about this because it's unusual. I, I mean, I got to be honest, I haven't, I don't have a full solution for all of this yet. I just, it doesn't feel bad to me. It's just different. But I found the codes very interesting also, the ones you were drawing. They feel so, sacred and I don't know why. I don't, and it doesn't feel, it feels there's, they're living and they're sacred. And I think they're, they're almost like portals. So I don't know, I'll let you know. Yeah. The new writing code. All right. So we've got Charlie and Charlie S. He says the light codes remind me of the symbols carved in stone age structures in Ireland and the southwest England. Our oh. friends in England have seen crop circles and there is no way uh, they are made by humans. This is apparent when you witness the interest, intricacy of the patterns. They appear overnight and they are awesome. And you showed that when you did your drawings, you had a picture how one of them relates to a crop circle design. Yeah, and there, there's, there's a lot more, but I didn't want to get into that. I've seen them, but I'm still back to what does that mean? Do you know, you know, I mean, it's, it's pretty deep stuff. So I don't know, but thanks for sharing that. I didn't realize that. I mean, so if anyone wants to send me something about these things, I'm still learning. They told me that they're not going to send me any more Morse code. They said, because I'm using my head versus my heart. And they said, you need to feel it and remember, because you know what these are. He said, they're signals to enhance humanity. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, apparently I'm not getting it. So 
Uh, we need all the help we can get. So I'm cool with that. Okay. Well, we've got Brenda uh, asking a question. I don't remember you addressing this. It says, how do we prove reincarnation? Have any of your encounters with other beings or past life regressions or uh, regressions for yourself ever addressed reincarnation? Well, I don't know if I, you know, here's the thing uh, about words. I mean, I did say that I have seen other lives. Are they past lives? Let me question past. Jesus told me, <laughs> here we go. He told me a few months ago that we have the technology to, uh, to time travel, that we've had it. He said, it's an alien technology. And he tells me a lot of stuff, <laughs> some really interesting things. So what is past? What is present? We're eternal. We are creation. We live forever. We cannot die. Okay. We are part of God. We are God's creation. So therefore we're creating, whether we're creating in heaven, where we're creating here, where we're creating on, you know, I don't know, Venus. I don't know. You know, I just follow wherever God wants me. If Jesus wants me to hang out, do something in, in Venus, I will do it. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter to me, but we cannot die. So life goes on. And Jesus gives me the examples of the flowers, you know, the flowers that come back every season and they even pollinate and they, they spread into other areas. And it is the cycle of thing. It is the, is the natural way that we, that we go on. That's why when you meet someone, sometimes you instantly love them because your soul knows, you know, them. Oh, one other thing about labels words. Uh, we need to bring this up. Jesus really has been harping on this for a year and a half. <laughs> when I started the channel, he told me to start it in August. He said, he said he wanted to talk about labeling. I said, me labeling and judging other people. He goes, well, not so much. I said, what are you talking about? And I, he's shown me a lot. It's kind of unfolded. It's still, uh, still unfolding. It's interesting, but he said that people label and limit themselves because they'll have either a dogma or they'll have a certain word that they will just hang them up like medium, or they'll have channeling, or there's certain buzzwords that, I, that people have, and it just stops them from their growth versus going okay and just putting it on ice and then moving forward with your spiritual journey. It's just like people from other religions don't want to talk to the other religions or people that politically do from other, from other, so, you know, what about putting it on ice and just moving forward with your spiritual journey and not walking in fear? He said, if you walk with me, I will walk you through the minefields of everything. So the labeling is what people do to themselves. And what they do is like those Russian dolls. They put themselves in another doll and another doll and another doll and another doll. So you get this little teeny thing going, I'm nobody. I'm not that important. And I'm like, you are a child in the most high. You need to take those little dolls out and pull that out and, and live fully because we will be spirit soon enough. So there, you know, the more we can get accomplished here on our spiritual journey, the easier this is going to go. Well, that's insightful. Uh, I've got a, one of our uh, attendees asked me to present this question in their behalf. With all the experiences you've had, uh, what can you share with us about the about suicide? Okay. So there's different levels of uh, our awareness, our consciousness, our spirituality. Okay, everybody's in different places. We're all on different. You're either on the highway, you're on a side road, but you know we're on the road and the road of life. Some people they have um, don't think that it couldn't happen to someone. I mean, you could lose your entire family and all your friends and get to a point you're that depressed, right? It could happen. Don't say it couldn't happen. So I have much love and compassion for people that, to get there, but that they could get to a point that it's so, um, it's so bad. The abuse, it could be abuse. It could be neglect. It could be that they've just had everyone they love die. They get in such a depressed way. They don't feel like their life matters that they do consider. I want to leave this world. It comes through all the time suicides and they, I can always tell because they'll have someone else bring them forward, like a daddy or something that will come. Oh, he's got, oh, that's, okay. That's my dad. Okay, good. Well, they've got your brother here <laughs> and they're always looking down like they're ashamed. So when I get uh, messages, it's always one of love and uh, love and support. We see what you're doing. We're okay. We, they really don't want to talk about themselves. They want to talk about you, but sometimes you will get an apology they get help on the other side. They get 
spiritual counseling in heaven, probably much better quality than here, <laughs> right? So their, their, their soul is taken care of. So if the, I find that just like, you know, you've met people like that, that are, maybe they're troubled or maybe they're emotionally damaged, right? You've met, we've all met people like that. God takes care of them. He knows where they are you know, in, in, their, in their emotional state. And Christ has always abundantly given us love to everybody. He does not judge at all. He is the first to take up for people. Sometimes I'll go, oh, that person's a jerk. And I'll go, oh, sorry, they're with you. Sorry, because <laughs> he takes up for everybody. So they are taken care of. It's heartwarming and comforting to know. I think it probably helps all of us have one aspect of our own lives. Um, and it kind of goes in the next question where Anne is asking, you know, what do you tell people that are struggling and losing hope about their futures? Okay, what was the question? What happens when, when yeah, people what, are losing what do you hope? Tell people, right, what do you tell people when they're struggling and losing hope about their own futures? How would you encourage them? When I, when I, you know, I'm going to, you asked me what I feel. I feel that for me, what has kept me going with my own personal life, I mean, it was a lot of horrible trauma, as I mentioned, it was not, it was not good. On top of the mental stuff that I was told, it's like, I was told I was going to be nothing. I mean, who says that, right? But I, you know, I, I have always, thank goodness, have clung to God and clung to Christ and and he and I have strength and power through him because without that, I'm just weak. I mean, I could just probably be like, you know, a crying, bubbling mess. I mean, he helped me through today. I mean, I was going through all these personal stuff and pictures and I said, I'm getting through this and I'm getting through it with you. So to me, you can call it a higher, a higher power, but I think it's critical. I've done life without Jesus and it sucks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It was fun partying and going to the discos, but it sucks. Okay. Because now he tells me he's a decent person who cares about me and my soul. Uh, I don't get involved with things. I, I, I think I have a straighter path. It's cleaner. There's so much love surrounding me and lovable people. And I'm, it's just good. So to me is having that because walking it alone it, it, without that, being a part of creation and also realizing you count, you count. Even Jesus told me, he said, if you did no other thing except exist and show people love, you would change the world. It's not about the diplomas or the degrees or the money. I used to make really good money. I made hardly anything. Okay. And I'm happy and I feel I'm on the path and I feel that I'm running probably maybe a lot of brownie points with Jesus, but I, I feel good. I feel like I'm now the person I'm supposed to be. So don't listen to the world. Listen to Christ and you, God that created you, and know that you are so loved. That is comforting. Uh, while well, that folks know, we do have at least 16 new messages. And Marina, you've got four or five within one block. So I'm going to ask the first one, but we're going to share your chat. And Tamara can maybe get back with you after this presentation. Um, so her question is, why do you think your childhood was so incredibly hard? Uh, so why was my childhood so heavily? So incredibly hard, <laughs> difficult. <laughs> can I ask the person who's asking me this? What's her name again? I'll, I'd like to ask her that. Well, I think Jesus already kind of covered that earlier is that we... Um, this is not easy here. Okay. It's not easy. This is why I, 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 God, what do you want for me? What do you want? Jesus, what do you want? What do I want? Sometimes it's not always what I want, but in the end, it's a lot better. Why did I have suffering? Why do all of us suffer? Some people have gone through crappy marriages. Some people have difficulty with their children. Why is this? Because we're learning. And so the, um, I thought it was really fascinating. I saw an interview with John Ball. He used to be an atheist. Okay. I just saw this not too long ago. And he was crying out to God, an atheist. And he's going, you know, my marriage is awful. My kids don't respect me and talk to me. I can't get a job. This is horrible. Why does it have to be so hard? You know, one of those moments he's yelling 
and he heard a voice for the first time in his head, you know, that's, we're, we're not just our lips, <laughs> we're a spiritual being, so we can perceive these things. He said, it's supposed to be. But I tell you what, it's a lot easier. My life is filled. It's, I'm human. I'm here. Look, I get, you know, the sniffles. I have things happen. Sometimes my back goes out, uh, you know, uh, you know, all these things. I, I, but can, being with God and with Christ can lift me up and, and, and literally supernaturally. I can't tell you how many times he's healed me. He's resurrected me six times. <laughs> there ain't nothing he can do. So it's, it's surrendering. It's the hardest thing we can do. Surrender to the love of your creator and ask him to fill your core with his mighty, powerful love. And you will be pleasantly surprised and life will go a lot better. Well, that's interesting. I'm going to go ahead and ask her a second question because you kind of alluded to it already. And it said, um, why do you think you needed to have six near-death experiences rather than just one or two? Well, I like it over there. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> and the other thing is, Jesus told me that he calls me sometimes his little tiger. This is our little pet name. And he goes, my little tiger, because I'll just go in there doing stuff. And I'm like, don't even have a clue. But if he wants me to do it, I'll go do it. I think it's because I can be the ex like all of us. But I think for me, it's because so I can be the example in the world and be a role model and be bold. And honestly, I don't really care what people think. I really don't. I care what Jesus thinks and God thinks. That's what I think first. And then the man who would be second, my husband, he would say, that's not true. He said, you don't care what I have to say, but I do. Um, but it really is in that order because um, I know that that if I do it all alone, it, it fails in that respect. So um, I don't know if I answered the question on that. I kind of, what was the last part of it? I kind of lost my thought because I started getting into another direction. Yeah, well, it was, uh, why did you need to have six MBEs instead of just one or two? Uh, was it a matter of the noggin? Was it hard to get the message through? Was it, you know, did you need more depth of message? <laughs> I don't think it's because I'm hard headed on that. I think it, it tightened my connection with God. I mean, I got to tell you, how many of those did you hear there was injuries to the head? It, I, I am really, I mean, I, I, I'm just going to be honest. I'm really good at what I do at being at connecting to Christ and a medium and whatever. I don't make, I, you know, people don't hear me say that, but I am extremely at the top. I've trained with 600 other people. Uh, and the reason being, because I work with God in Christ, I get it clean. I'm getting weird stuff. I use discernment and I'm able to use these gifts with healing, with channel messages from above, with being able, I help people with healings. I do healings all the time. I don't even do healings always in front of them. I'll go visit them at night. There's so much stuff I'm doing that I have heightened abilities because I went over there. So I'm not encouraging you to do that. I'm just saying that's my path is that it was like checking in with home base. I, and I do like it over there, but it's, we live forever. It's just a choice that I made with God. And I knew he needed, Jesus wanted a lot of help. And even though I was fussy in the beginning and I usually am, I always do what he tells me to do. Okay. Um, going back to your discussion of the extraterrestrials. The question here is from Dahlia, and she asked, are there evil aliens, and how do you avoid those UFO encounters? Avoid? <laughs> okay, so on this planet Earth, do you, do, have you not met a bad person? There are, and some, there's some evil people. There are people in prisons, or need to be in prisons, that have killed people, right? But I don't focus on that. I focus on the beautiful people here. I don't focus on those I'll say, Lord, you need to handle that. I don't know about that. I don't. I don't know about a killer or a solo killer. And I'll tell Jesus, look, I, I don't have that kind of love. I'm sorry. I know you're that way. Um, I will pray for people. Like, I don't know what they need, but you do. But I don't worry about the darkness in the world. And if it comes straight on, I, I plead the blood of Jesus on it, tell it to back up. But otherwise, I don't worry about that. The same thing is it doesn't matter spirit people. Goes, they don't mess with me. I've said, I have, I have stories on that. They know, do not mess with me because not only have I been spirit, I've got a body and I can do the same things you can do. And I got Jesus here. So you need to back off because they will, they will put, they will push your boundaries. So, um, 
the the bad ets i asked jesus about that oh gosh <laughs> you had to have a controversial speaker today <laughs> jesus and ets and all this stuff that people are very controversial isn't this great so but anything interesting yes right so he told me i asked him about the reptilians i said are they demons and he said well they're close cousins. <laughs> now, some people would, I just tell you what I've been told. Okay. I'm so, that's all I can do. And, I, and then I've had Aster tell me who's with Jesus, the galactic, he, and he's very, uh, he's blonde haired, looks Swedish. He's very to the point. And he said, yeah, we know about them. They go to different planets. They do the same thing. They really like to get the women and get them impregnated. They, they put this scent out and they do this thing where they don't know they're basically horrible looking. And they, they have these underground things. They like to have people there. They do it on every planet. We have trolls. We keep on They don't follow the Federation, the other planets, and said so that they like drinking the baby's blood. I said, this is horrible. And Jesus said, yeah, and told me that they are basically, um, even the Palladians agreed. They said, yeah, they're not good. I don't want to talk about them. They are more of a lower vibration and greed and selfish and more about us. I said, well, what are they here for? And they said to con for consumption. I said, what do you mean? He says to they use it as a product. And then when we're done, eat us. I said, well, this is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. So I stay protected in Christ's light, but the, the, look, that's not my world. The other good aliens, whatever you want to call them, they know about this. I think the, uh, the grays just kind of follow along, but they have their own agenda too. I think that they're more uh, some of them might be thought of as clones. So they have a, a, like a herd mentality, like horses. So I don't deal with those. Um, the ones that come through to me are the ones that work with the uh, Elohim, Jesus, the angelic council. I don't deal with that. Just like I don't deal with people that are killers or things like that. So it's where your mind is. Jesus told us is where our intention is. You come from love and your intentions is to be around beautiful people or beautiful beings, that's what you're going to get. Yes, I guess we all have a chance to stay in selected audience. Uh, she did have another question again, Delia. She said, are we star seeded from other aliens like Syrians and Palladians? You know, this is a work in progress here, but I'm thinking so. And I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think probably, I think we did. Okay, they've been around billions of years. Earth, how long has it been around? Does it matter? Does it matter if I have a Native American heritage or I came from so-and-so? Does it really matter? God made it all. Does it really, some people get so hung up like on ancestry, they get really hung up. Okay, I'm like 90% from England, it's crazy. And, and, and I'm like, okay, am I gonna go over there and meet my folks? I don't know, but, but then we have soul DNA. And so we have our genetic DNA and then we got soul DNA. Our soul DNA is where our whole track life path has evolved in our decisions that we've made on an Akashic Hall of Records kind of level. And that's the area that I'm interested in. So um, DNA, yeah, probably so, because I, I had a guy on my channel, what was it, uh, Sergio Magnata, very fascinating. See, I didn't think he'd be fascinating. I was blown away. And he had a book on the Toltec prophecies, which is the Mayan. And he had, he kept having these talks out. He's from, he lives in England and Mexico. And a Palladian came and said, we've been following your people for years. And he thought, yeah, right. And he talked to him and he said, this guy was for real. And he said, you, we have DNA so-and-so. And of course, if you look into this, you can see uh, spaceships and stuff on the Mayan ruins and all of that. So I don't think we're told. And Jesus told me, he says, do not rely on man. And he's interactive. He's interactive. So you can get information directly. And he said, don't rely on me because they will lie to you, rely on me. And so um, we probably haven't been told the truth on that, but it doesn't really matter to me. I love him and I don't care. I don't care. You know what I mean? Does it change anything? I am because I am. Well, that sounds good. I want to let you know there's other comments there in the chat that will, I'll show you how to save those. But um, majority are saying, hey, you know, you've been through a, you had a really rough start, but you had so much courage to come on this show and, and help enlighten us to where our path might be going in the future and that you your talk has been, been beneficial for many of our guests here today. So with that being said, uh, along with a lot of accolades and thank yous, I'm gonna turn this over to, uh, we're gonna end our question and answer period. 
And I believe I'm turning this over to Robert at this time. Uh, thank you, uh, Linda. And Tamara Calder Richardson, you hit a home run. Did outstanding. Thank you. Great presentation. I just wanted to add one thing. Uh, she had me on her show as a guest for a segment on Valentine's Day called Puppy Love. I was blown away. All the every animal I ever had in my life came through, and she described them perfectly. And followed up with a with a sequel with my son, who uh, validated the same thing. So um, she not only talks the talk, but she she walks the walk too. Uh, I just put in a plug in for her show. The Seeking Heaven channel is, is really cute. neat podcast. It, that, that was very cute. That said, when your son was adorable because I think you had a, a wiener dog. And I said, he's a wiener dog. Is when you met your wife. And, he's, and he checked and he did exist. And I think that, that they'll leave little nuggets, spirit will, to you to, for you to check. And you go, oh my gosh. And I love when they do that. That was cool. The raccoon is what sold it. A raccoon. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thanks for the food. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I just wanted to remind our audience, um, and by the way, we had, a, we had a nice following on Facebook this time. Uh, for example, Raymond O'Brien was tuning in from England. We had people from all over the world. And thank you for all the people that attended this session, Ireland, Istanbul, England, Mexico, all over the United States and Canada. Thank you so much. Um, we have, uh, we present online speaker events the third Saturday of every month. Our next SAI event is Saturday, January 15th. Lewis Brown Griggs is going to talk on the gifts of near deaths. It'll be a great presentation. And SAI, SAI is hosting our next SAI Experiencers Sharing Circle on Sunday, January 2nd, 2022. We normally do that on a Saturday, but it's New Year's Day, so we've moved it to Sunday, January 2nd, and, and uh, the sharing circles are awesome. Um, we have a special January 4th uh, event to, discuss, to uh, bring to everybody's attention. Our president and the co-founder of SAI is speaking on January 4th for Hawaiian Ions, it'll be a 9 p.m. Eastern uh, presentation, and you can uh, you can sign up for that on the SAI website. Now we hold uh, Spanish language Espanol events the second Saturday of every month. Again, uh, we have Anna Cecilia Gonzalez here. She is the person that spearheads this. Great job, Anna. Our next. Spanish event will be Saturday, January 8th. We're gonna have Dr. Ingrid Honkala in Espanol. If you know anybody that uh, speaks the uh, uh, Spanish language, Espanol, please have them uh, catch the presentation. And please register for all of our events and sharing circles on our SAI website. And please check out our website, it's beautiful. We have it not only in English, but due to Anna, and her friends, uh, we now have it translated into Espanol. So we have it in both languages. Uh, www.spiritualawakeningsinternational.org. Be sure to click on that donate button and help us out. I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Uh, uh, Kaysan. Thank you everybody for coming. And thank you again, Tamara. Thank you, Robert. Uh... So thank you again. I want to say thank you to Tamara for an absolutely outstanding presentation. Um, I think you were a real Christmas blessing to all of us today. Lots of thumbs ups and people saying thank you. It was awesome. I want everybody to know that the video for this presentation, if you want to watch it again right away, it will be on our SAI Facebook page right away. You know, people watching it live when it's over it'll be posted on our facebook page so you can watch it there again or share it with your friends and um the edited video the professional cut <laughs> will be on our sai website in about two days and so uh you can also watch it on our, our website and eventually it'll be on youtube 
And I just wanted to say one last thing before we say goodbye today, which is uh, that Spiritual Awakenings International is committed to offering all our events for free so that everyone around the world can attend uh, regardless of their financial situation. So if you're able, if you might wanna consider ask, adding Spiritual Awakenings International to your Christmas list and giving us a little Christmas present, a donation uh, at this end of year time and to say thank you for all of our free events. And again, that's done on our website, on our donation page, and all donations are tax deductible in the United States. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye until next time. And uh, if people can put on their gallery view, you're going to see all of us on the screen now. So goodbye, everybody. Until next time. Goodbye. Au revoir. Auf Wiedersehen. Adieu. Hasta la vista, <laughs> arrivederci, farvel, ciao, and aloha. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Merry Christmas.